Keenan Allen is a Chicago Bear. Omar Khan says, hold my beer. Justin Fields is a Pittsburgh Steelers. What does it all mean for fantasy football? We tell you all this and more on tonight's IBT podcast coming right at you. Cause I've been in tune, out of touch, coming off the bench, trying to shake the funk, check his stat line, see who's up, that over, under, hit too clutch. And I'm trying to avoid getting carried away with the jet sweet, sleeping on a trick play, predicting all of my moves like they see every play. So I'm running it back, head down, get out of my way, and it's for the law with only one thing to do. I guess I'll say a prayer and put it all on the line. What they don't know, something they haven't seen. I find a gap on the screen and hit them right in between. Yeah, I got it. And I got it. Just one thing to say, yeah, what they don't know, something they haven't seen. I'm off that mean Joe Green. It got me fading in between. Yeah, I got it. In between fantasy football podcast. All right, all right, all right. It is Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. And the sports world, it is a buzzing. March Madness is here. PGA is rolling on. And NASCAR, still electrifying. But the NFL, above all, continues to dominate the headlines. We'll certainly chat all about that tonight. My name is Seth Wilcock, and I'm joined by America's quarterback, our quarterback, a shit stirrer and a fashion dabbler, Nicholas Hoover. What's up, Hoover? How are we doing tonight, brother? This is quite the intro. I'm liking it so far. This is going to be a great episode. I'm feeling it. We got some excitement with free agency. I'm getting excited based off this hype up we got going on off set. So, all right, but I'm not alone. All right. We also got, you can go ahead, do your thing. Yeah, do your thing, I, do your thing. I was, we also have a very special guest joining us tonight, a member of the IBT family and staff, a man who covers both fantasy football and the entertainment world here for IBT, a man who saves lives and also you from shit ass players. He's Boston's boy, Steve Lassen. What's up, Mr. Lawson? How are we doing tonight, man? I am so excited to be finally making the uh, the podcast debut. I've been bugging you for long enough to get me on there. Now I just need the hype video to go along with it. You know, like I need I need my own little like hype Steve bid. corner. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Well, Steve, I'm excited to have you here and all your your Boston greatness uh, join the program with us tonight on the show. We have headline hijinks. It was an emotional roller coaster out here in the great state of Pennsylvania over the last 96, 72 hours. Um, we're going to break it all down from a fantasy football perspective. Uh, and then we'll do some Ring of Fire. This is one of our drinking games turned fantasy football slash trivia game. We'll break that out with our guy, Kyle Scott. And then we'll do some from the forum. And also joining us, I already gave his name away, a guy who's on quite the come up right now after unknowingly being hacked on Twitter and retweeting some pretty ignorant shit on his account. He's Kyle Scott. Kyle, uh, good to see you on the bounce back, my friend. Yeah, man, we're all up and up. Things have been taken care of. Nothing to worry about over here in Pittsburgh. Nothing to worry about. I, I appreciate it. Uh, so I get a message from one of our other staff members. Hey, you got Kyle's number. You might want to text him. He's he's. Uh, I think it's, he's been hacked. He, there's some ignorant shit on his account right now. And Boy, was it, Kyle. I'm I'm glad to hear that you were, in fact, hacked. Did you change that password? And if so, do you want to share that password here live tonight? Yeah, absolutely. It is Seth's address. So let me pull it up here. It's, <laughs> it's uh... Good to have you back, as always. And uh, also good to be riding with the IBT family. Thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight. We got Stacy in the chat. What's up, family? What's good, Stacy? Good to see you down there in the great state of Kentucky. I know you're having a great time down there. We got Scott saying greetings, Silver friends, Fox. from kids dinner duty. Yeah, Scott had to punch out tonight. Uh, the wife was sick. He was on kid dinner and uh, and bed duty. So uh, we appreciate you, Scott, out there uh, making the youth a better place. How about it, Hoof? I respect. That's my boy. My boy, Blue. All right. I got you. You'll be back soon. Well, I'll give it to you. This was, this was supposed to be my off week. Both of you guys was. out. You know, it was. That's okay. We got we got some MVP sliding candidates. All right. We got your boy who 
We got America's hero, Steve Lawson. So <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got Albert also in the chat. Good evening, IBT. Good to see you, Albert. And uh want to thank everyone. We're like right on the cusp of 900 subs. Like, holy shit, guys. I was not expecting to get there this quickly. We have the goal end of April to hit 1,000. That was a pretty lofty goal. That was like 100 new subscribers per month. We're like just about there. So thank you guys so much for doing everything, helping us with that. And also just a a reminder, draft night out tickets are on sale. If you want to come kick it with us in person, hang out, do some fancy football live draft. And we got a full bar, a full restaurant ready to go for it. Two different floors, Hoove. Definitely a little bit of walking back and forth for us. But I know everyone else is vibing out in that patio looking over Tom Benson Memorial Hall of Fame Raymond Stadium. I mean, at least I got the the elevator to go up and down for most people, at least, yeah. at least for me. Yeah. You know, like yeah. once once you hit those stairs after like so many trips, because you got to like just go and commission all the tables. Yeah. Man, that, that elevator is so nice. It's just heavenly. Great well, addition to the brew kettle. Yeah, luckily there's enough booze to keep you going and keep you limber and, and you're That's feeling right. good. But afterwards, when you, when the drinking stops, the legs stop a little bit. I was feeling a little tight in the evening. But come hang out with us, guys. Tickets available on the website for that if you want to come out, if you're out for the Fantasy Football Expo. Let's go ahead and jump into things, though, with headline hijinks. <laughs> All right, headline hijinks. And I usually don't like to be the first person to give out my headline. I like to to give the stage to either one of our guests or one of my co-hosts. This week, though, I didn't think there was anyone better to give the headline than the man I think it affected more than most. Um, Kenny Pickett traded to the Eagles for a 3-4 swap and uh, two 2025 seventh round picks, then goes ahead and gets Justin Fields traded to the Steelers for a 2025 conditional six round pick. I'll be honest, guys. I, I was taken back on Friday night when I got the Kenny Pickett news. I, I didn't love the fact that, oh shit, like we're turning the franchise over to Russ. But then Omar Khan does his thing. My headline get the con man, some IC heavies. And anyone who knows a thing about Iron City beer, Kyle, what's the best kind of Iron City beer out there? Iron City Heavy. Yeah, there we go, baby. Iron City Light. It's okay. It's okay. I'm drinking a mango tonight, actually. Kyle, you got any? Uh, you guys have the icy mango? Anyone have the icy mango yet? Uh, I don't like the ice icy mango. I don't like the icy teas that much. Give me a wow. straight Iron City for me. Well, we're gonna get one for beer. Well, we're gonna get one from Marcon as well because this deal was pretty awesome, honestly. To be able to go out and get a guy that's had 45 combined touchdowns the past two seasons in Chicago, you know, still some suspect weapons out in Chicago, some suspect coaching. Now he's gonna be under Arthur Smith. I don't know if that's good or bad yet, but uh, who I feel like generally this could be a good thing for Justin Fields if he can upend uh, Russell Wilson there as the starter. I, I don't know if this year there's going to be a chance for Justin Fields to to come in unless Russ gets hurt. But as far as Omar Khan goes, uh, trading Kenny Pickett and getting Justin Fields at both prices, I don't think it's really a power move on his part. I think it's kind of it goes back to a few weeks ago when I was talking about Joe Milton, and I was saying that someone franchise are probably going to view a guy like Joe Milton higher than a guy like Spencer Rattler because Spencer Rattler is going to cause that quarterback controversy. So a guy like Kenny Pickett going to the Eagles, it's going they're home. Gonna, they, yeah, they might pay a higher price for someone that isn't going to cause a co- quarterback controversy, if that makes sense, because Justin Fields got dropped all the way onto a six-rounder with the Steelers. And everyone, that's the talk of the town now is who's going to start, whether it's Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Yeah. So I think that could play a factor in, and why the price was so low, but I I've heard that that uh, polls has just dropped the bag on Justin Fields trade, and he he showed his car he showed his hand way too early, so I can't go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah I gotta yeah, let yeah. I gotta let someone else handle yeah. that. But uh, I don't know if it's necessarily as much of a power move on Omar Khan as much as people want to say. Wow. Okay, Steve, from fantasy football perspective for you. 
how do you approach it in best balls? Are you taking a late round shot on Justin Fields still or Russell Wilson? And then from a dynasty lens, like what is the value for him? Because I got s- some pretty ignorant shit said to me uh, in in some leagues when I was trying to throw out. Hey, I don't I don't think Justin Fields. While this is still good, you're still this is still his his bottom value right now as he is a backup. W- what's the value dynasty wise and best ball and redraft? Well, right now his value, you're right, will never get lower than this. But his potential to borrow from Russ is unlimited. You know what I mean? It's unlimited. So. Justin Fields, when he's on, he is the best quarterback for fantasy in football. Far none, no one's better because that man could put up 150 yards rushing in a game. Listen, Russ is a he is such a product of that Seattle system. It was so carried by the Legion of Boom, and Russ built a career off of other men. Like he's not a good quarterback. I don't really foresee him being the Steelers starter long term. Justin Fields is the guy. Justin Fields is the guy you want to buy. Best ball, I'm buying him. Dynasty, I'm buying him. Redraft, I'm buying him. Everywhere I can get Justin Fields, I am buying Justin Fields. Okay. Okay. Who? What What round pick would you give up to get Justin Fields in a Dynasty League? Because you're a little more hesitant. Steve, I think, is, is probably the highest of the three of us on Fields. I think I'm kind of right in the middle. I like the upside here in this Arthur Smith scheme. Um, would you give up a second round pick for or a third round pick? rookie pick for Justin Fields? No, I think I'm, I think the best I can do with Justin Fields is a pick swap or a player swap. Okay. Um, someone around the third round cusp because like the NFL market for quarterbacks, it's such a, it's such a fast changing league, you know, guys like Trey Lance, like yeah. you know, Trey Lance could have gotten an opportunity last year. And sure enough, another name that's getting forgotten about in the quarterback cycle. Because yeah, he's played 17 yeah. downs of football. Yeah, right. yeah, for real. And, <laughs> and Justin Fields has shown what he can do, and yet, third, and how many other GMs are showing yeah. you that they don't really want to, they don't want him yeah. as their starting quarterback. They want him as their backup quarterback because he's still a project in their eyes. And the older he gets, the more you're going to start turning towards someone younger, being like, "I'd rather pay that than pay Justin Fields." Like, I don't, I don't know if Justin Fields is really as valuable as people want to believe right now, as talented as he could be. Like it's, it's an unfortunate, it's an unfortunate situation, but I think that the the fact that the NFL changes so fast that he could be like left in the dust. I'm, I'm willing to throw a third round pick out there in dynasty leagues right now. Super flex formats, not single quarterback. I don't think I would throw a pick out there for him, but if someone's willing to, to to bite in a super flex, I'll throw out a third round pick. I don't mind it. I, I think this offense could get a lot better in the next couple months. We know they're going to go after some day two receivers here, boys. I don't know who it is. We don't know who it's going to be quite yet, but uh, could be could be Steve's guy, Keon Coleman, that gets a potential bump here or someone else in this offense. That's the guy. That's the guy. I'm, That's the I'm answer. Not so sure. I'm throwing I, a I'm throwing a mid second for Justin Fields right now and hoping okay. to God they go and get Keon Coleman. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk some wide receivers here. Uh, Kenny, you will be missed, man. But, uh, it, you know, t- tough, t- tough go. And like, he didn't really get the chance either. You know, didn't really get the chance. I, I, I feel like when you have Matt Canada as your offensive coordinator, it, you get one game, you were kind of suspect, has another game, he's good, goes out in a concussion with another game, never got another chance. Like, it's tough. I feel bad for the kid. I'm not going to be, what you know, one of the Kenny crybabies, though, as people are saying out there on the internet. Um, let's go ahead and let's talk Calvin Ridley. He goes to the Titans on a four year, $92 million deal. Of course, this comes out, I think Wednesday or Thursday last week after we had done our free agency winners and losers, Steve, what's your headline here and who are the winners and losers affected out in the great city of Nashville? So the headline is Ridley more like ridiculous. Cause that's a stupid contract. That's dumb. Tennessee has gone all in on being mid as fuck. And I'm going to tell you right now, this team is not going to do shit <laughs> all year. They went and got a bunch of guys that can barely beat, like, I don't know, like a pop one or football team. This team's going to go like seven and nine or seven and 10 and get a middle round pick for the next like four years. China and Chitabe, Awuzie, Calvin <laughs> Ridley, all these like mid ass players. Not Tony one Pollard. good player. Tony Pollard, like Mason Rudolph. Like, this is just mid. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, this is mid. This is so sad. Like, this team is so bad, and this franchise is so poorly run. They went, They couldn't even get a good coach. Like, that's what I'm talking about. They got a mid coach. They got a mid team. That's what they are. They're mid. For a mid fucking city, too. So, that's what's up. 
So from from a fantasy football perspective, is there any any light? Like, do you want to invest in in the Titans at all? Because obviously, last week we knew the running backs were both losers. Ty J Spears, as Tony Pollard come in comes in as a loser. DeAndre Hopkins, uh, also a bit of a loser here. But Hopkins is now even more of a discount. He was going right in that wide receiver forty range on underdog. He's going to be pushed back. I, I would imagine when the next ADP bumps out to like maybe 45, 47, like. At that point, I'm willing to take the shot on Nuke. Like, Nuke is going to be Nuke. Like, you have to. And honestly, like, I don't know what people are doing. Like, go ahead and drop him if you want. But DeAndre Hopkins is still better than Calvin Ridley. Like, I don't know where this is coming from that we're dropping DeAndre Hopkins. As if, like, we saw the game that uh, Will Levis came in and played. And DeAndre Hopkins went absolutely bonkers on it. Like, we know what he can do. He's still that dude. Like, if I was a wide receiver, I'd rather retire than go to Tennessee at this point because it really is like the place where wide receivers go to die. But DeAndre Hopkins is still that dude. Like he's probably going to put up – like honestly, I would not be shocked if he put up 1,000 yards this year. It, it, what did he have? He was close to 1,000. He, he might have had 1,000 last year. He was close. Uh, who, real quick, close the book. Who do you have higher in your redraft rankings right now, uh, Ridley or Nuke Hopkins here with Will Levis slinging the pill? Uh, Ridley strictly just because of age. Okay. Okay. Ridley's like 150. <laughs> They're honestly not that far apart. Like, I, I don't think, think in I age. think Hopkins is 31. And I yeah, think like, Hopkins I think is 31. Ridley's 29. I'm like, not buying 30. I'm, I'm not buying right now, either 39. of them. I'm not buying either of them, but in best ball, I will absolutely be buying them at price. Yeah. I think that the fact that yeah. we like you said, like with Will Levis, like the fact that he could go off for like three touchdowns with one guy in a game, like Money, 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 money. I want that. So I'm gonna buy. I'll buy that. And the fact that I'll take a little victory lap from when we were talking about how we should trade all your Bryce Young shares for Will Levis. Yeah, that already would be paying off because the fact that even if every other asset there isn't productive, like you've seen Tony Pollard have assets around him and stink, so you you might not want Tony Pollard. You've seen Calvin Ridley kind of have games, you know, and you've seen Nuke just kind of. Mm. nukes nuke i'm never gonna say anything bad about that man that man is too good to ever take a slight at but like you've seen that will levis is just going to be surrounded by so much talent that he he's the can't miss like it is kind of like a mid, lot of, it, it is kind of like mid-talent though like steve said though it's like it's like all okay like N- nuke is still okay and like i know we love chig Conquay, but like I, I feel like it's just okay talent but the thing I like is I like the Callahan offense coming over from Cincinnati. I think his dad's going to get the offensive line strained out there. And I, I think they are coming on the up here. Hoof. So like, I don't mind investing them and like, hell man, if, if someone's really like low on nuke two in a dynasty league, I, I wouldn't mind floating something out there for him either. Question for you. If, okay, let's say hypothetically, if you surrounded Justin Fields with this team last year, would you say it would like at this point in their career, would you say that he's surrounded with mid talent or did you say that they went all in to surround him with talent? Mid. Mm, this it, team's it, mid. Yeah. This team is mid. There's yeah. nothing good about it. It's okay. You have, DeAndre Hopkins, with, and you have to factor in that it's Brian Callahan and Brian Callahan. Like the fuck I care about Brian Callahan for that team is trash. <laughs> Coming from the Bengals offense, he's been around it. He could oh, easily yeah, fit he Tony so Pollard. Good with that. You could put Tony Pollard in a Joe Mixon role. I mean, like Ty J Spears is gonna eat up a little bit of it. All right. It doesn't have to be Joe all Callahan, Tony Pollard. Joe Callahan got Joe Burrow killed th- two out of three years. Joe Callahan and his Brian daddy Callahan. ain't gonna solve shit. We, we, got, we got Scott saying, I, I'm really curious how Steve feels about the Titans. Yeah, definitely some sass. Uh, Steve, you get broken up with in, in Nashville or something, right? Or wake up blacked out. What, is, is there a story there? Is there there's no, some... You know what? I'm just so sick of the Tennessee Titans. Like, honestly, that team has done so dirty by Derrick Henry. Like, and I love Derrick Henry. Jeez. And, like, it, they just did him so dirty. And, like, that's just a mid franchise. And vrabel has gone. I don't think that they did him dirty. Vrabel's all like Vrabel wasn't that great. Like it just they never put talent around him. Like the best quarterback in your franchise his last 25 years is Ryan Tannehill. That's sad. 
Scott saying Ridley is still 25 in quote suspended for gambling years. Yes. So I think to put a button on it, guys, I think we're both interested in Calvin Ridley and Hopkins to some degree. While we don't love the move and we think it's an overpay from a football perspective, if we can get Hopkins on the cheap in a best ball or a dynasty, we're going to do it. Um, see a Traylon Burks. That's all I got to say. You know, this obviously means they're moving on kind of from the belief that he can ever be anything more than a third wide out. Hoove, I want to go to you for our final headline hijinks of the night. Shocker, really shocker. Uh, Keenan Allen traded Chicago for a fourth round pick this year. I, I wonder if there were a lot of teams that knew he could go for just a fourth round pick. I, I know the contract is expensive. I know Keenan Allen's getting up there in age a little bit, not the most durable player at this point in his career, but still absolute fucking baller. Uh, what's your takeaway here? What's the headline? I heard the Texans were interested. I heard the jets were interested and he ended up with the bears somehow. So I'm not sure how that worked out, but uh, I think it's exciting. I got my headline for the bears. Windy City looking pretty, all right? We got so much talent around him, but I don't really know, and I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about it. I won't go full conspiracy theory, get my board out for it, but there's one thing I, I want people to understand with this, the way that the Bears have orchestrated this offense is that they're they're looking for, if they're looking to surround Caleb Williams, I'm not taking a knock at Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen is one of the best route receivers in the game, but he is... 31 turning 32 this year i believe right yes and you have dj moore who i believe is 28 at this point i think he's 26 26 so he's a little younger but obviously you're seeing keenan allen at the second at the second age in his career like starting gonna start to decline eventually and so like you're going to need a quarterback to really make the right decisions with guys like DeAndre Swift, with Keenan Allen, with DJ Moore. Trigger time and is what you're saying, like delivering the ball on time in a schematic fashion. Correct. And maybe not an explosive quarterback or someone that just tries to make plays happen and be, be great. You know, if it's not someone that wants to be one of the greatest of all time and just try to make spectacular shit happen. So maybe you need someone that actually focuses on checkdowns and, oh and, and the smart plays <laughs> and stuff so, like that. So, so to the IBT family, who is basically alluding to in his latest mock draft, he put out on Twitter. Uh, he thinks JJ McCarthy is going to the bears. He thinks they're going to trade back. They, they think, Caleb Williams will go one still to Washington. It will be, it will be a trade. And it, it makes sense to, to a point, um, to a point who, but at the same time, a uh, lot, a lot of, a lot of good things, no matter who the quarterback is, you know what I mean? Whether it's JJ McCarthy or whether it is going to be Caleb Williams. I, I think there's just a lot of excitement around this potential offense. Like Keenan Allen obviously takes a hit. He's not the third round pick you were drafting in best balls a couple months ago, but Keenan Allen's still someone we got to keep an eye on and still someone I, I think even with DJ Moore in this offense who takes a hit himself from a second round pick, probably back more till the third or fourth round himself. There's still some upside here. So I, I, I think you're totally like, I think you're reading the tea leaves, right, man. I think you're reading the tea leaves, right. And I, I think from a betting perspective as well, who've like, there could be uh, some potential like high money, high money situations if that's what you're kind of seeing as well. Like, I don't know what Caleb Willie or uh, JJ McCarthy's odds to go to the Bears are, but they got to be sky high. Like, you you could make something real nice on that. Well, people want to like look up, like tear down uh, Jim Harbaugh saying that he thinks that JJ will be the first quarterback off the board as him just like hyping up his, his college quarterback, but he could be saying that as someone that he knows the Bears organization has really been recruiting with Michigan. And he knows that Ryan Poles is interested in JJ McCarthy way before the combine. So that could be a reason why, because he was, he knew that the Bears held the first overall pick then. So that could be why he said like, I could see the Bears being the first, like that JJ could be the first quarterback off the board. That's a little bit why I alluded to JJ McCarthy in that mock, but even with JJ, even with Jaden Daniels, Jaden Daniels is a smart football player. And he knows, like, if you want the, the same excitement and the same intelligence, Jaden Daniels could go 2-2 to, to Chicago in that trade down situation. And I would have no issue with it because he's just a he's that good of a player. 
Steve, will you be drafting Keenan Allen at all this year with him being on the Bears? It's going to be more of a discount now, but definitely a lot more risk because regardless of what quarterback it is, it's going to be a rookie throwing the ball to him and not Justin Herbert. Um, So I'm not drafting Keenan Allen like I was last year uh, because I don't think there's 20 targets a game coming his way. Uh, But I actually am in on Keenan Allen. If he's a fourth rounder, fifth rounder, I'm I'm pretty happy there. Uh, I'm with Hoove. I don't think the Bears take in... Caleb at number one either I think they trade back but if they're smart I agree they need someone who can get the ball out and get them get it to their guys I think they should trade back they are not a quarterback away this is a full rebuild still they need an offensive I like, line I, I I like yes besides they the need offensive an offensive line, line and I they like need a defense they still need a defense they are not a quarterback away what they should do is trade back Mont- a little bit wait on quarterback Jalen Johnson Montez Sweat I I, I I they honestly think to, to me draft. There is th- one quarterback in this draft who belongs in Chicago, and it is Jordan Travis. That is the man oh, who could turn oh, around the Chicago Bears oh, right. right there. All right, we're mo- we're we're moving on. Regardless, I-, I think wrapping this up might be. These guys are saying some potential value in the betting market right now. If you do believe that it could be a different quarterback, I, I don't think I'm going to throw my-, my hat in the Jordan Travis ring, but. Uh, Regardless, right. and we're also still in on Keenan Allen at a fourth or fifth we are. round price. We're definitely in on a fourth so, or fifth round price yeah, tag. I'm with you there. I would definitely more than DJ Moore. I'd rather take Keenan Allen than DJ yes. Moore at this point. Yeah. Hoove, really? not you. Easier. At ADP, at ADP, Hoove, because because DJ, DJ Moore is still probably going to be back end of the third. He's going to go ahead of Keenan Allen, 100. percent DJ Moore was a top 10 quarterback or top 10 wide receiver last year. So, so was Keenan on. Allen was like top, wide top receiver five. three, yeah, before he got hurt, bro. But what? he's changing offenses. This is the same offense for DJ matter. Moore. Someone like Keenan Allen, he's going to get targeted by a rookie quarterback yeah. because he's at all, this it's stage, shorter and easier to hit him. Look he's at still, the stats. He's, a he's still a dog. Look at okay. Like I said, I'm not going to take any knock on Keenan Allen because he's one of the best. But like even guys like that you see up there in age when they transition to a new team in their 30s, they can't do it. Any, they can't yeah, but learn the Julio offense. Julio Jones coming off of, like, you know, being an old man, going to Philly. Like, this is Keenan Allen off his best season ever. Hoof's thinking it's, it's Julio Jones to Tennessee, though. That's what you're thinking, isn't it, Hoof? You're thinking it's more like that move, maybe. I think it, I'm not saying he's at that point in his career. Yeah. I'm he's saying never. productively for fantasy. Yeah. When you have that point. many weapons around, you have you have Cole Komet, who was a top ten tight end last year, who could yeah. eat up some targets. Like there is, a, there is so many opportunities for everyone to eat up. I cannot and, like, believe you away. just put Keenan Allen and Cole Komet in the same sentence. And we're like, well, Cole Komet could eat into Keenan Allen. Cole Komet could barely, barely deserve to touch the same ball as Keenan. Allen. All right, we got to We got to move on. We got a lot more NFL news to quickly touch on here. We'll just do the rundown. No headlines for us. Aaron Donald retires. Shout out Aaron Donald. Thank you for the great years of service. It was a pleasure to watch this guy fucking play. Very charitable Pittsburgh guy, Pittsburgh kid. So super, super happy uh, to, to see Aaron Donald walks away still at the top of his game. Um, and I think from a fantasy football perspective, this could mean a worse Rams defense. Cooper Cup, I've been drafting a lot of him in the late third, early fourth round of underdog drafts. You should be too. Same with Puka Nakua. He's going in the first. I don't mind that price. Marquise Hollywood Brown signs a one-year, $11 million deal with Kansas City. Who do you like this move? I think that that move is very telling, and I'm excited for the Chiefs. Uh, they ha- if. I feel like you just dropped in a secret weapon. Hollywood Brown is my secret weapon in Madden. You give me some speed and I can just send them, send them down the field. That's the way to go. And you add another speedster in that offense with Patrick Mahomes. Come on. Patrick Mahomes ADP should be going up. I think a little bit because of this already a value, but still who or like Steve, we still know this guy's got a little bit of case of the dropsies as well. So I don't think it's like a huge upgrade over like it's basically an upgrade over MVS. That's kind of what I what I see it as. But it's still like doesn't move the needle. And I don't think it stops them from potentially getting in Xavier Worthy or an Donnie Mitchell at the end of the first round either. Or Troy Franklin. And, and it honestly like it, it hurt. I mean, it's, it's going to hurt Rasheed Rice maybe a little, but I don't think it's really going to affect him that much. So like I think like it might bring his ADP back a little bit because people get worried. But I, I'm still on in on Rasheed Rice as well. Um, Curtis Samuel signs a three-year, $24 million deal with Buffalo. 
Holy shnikes. Curtis Samuel's the big addition there. Um, Steve, will you be taking a late round shot on Curtis Samuel here now that he's potentially the the wide receiver, whatever you want to look at it, two, three, you don't really know. It's it, it's interesting because him and Shakir kind of play a similar role outside the slot and can also play outside. So I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, it, I, yeah, I'll take a late a late round shot on him. Sure. I mean, it, it Curtis Samuel is what he is at this point. I mean, it, it's not like we're like not sure what Curtis Samuel can be. I mean, he's been in the league for long enough that he's fine. Um, he's fast. Maybe they'll use him in that gadget yeah. role. If they use him gadgety, I'm much more interested. If they're like expecting him to run crisp, clean routes, uh, you're going to be in trouble. Scott, uh, ending the debate we were having earlier, rather have more in a vacuum, but Keenan likely at cost. Yeah, I think that's super reasonable there, Scott. Um, Also saying Rice is a league winner. Uh, Vikings get Texans, number 23, uh, number 20. Oh, sorry. It's completely. Yep. Nope. Number 23, number 232 for their 42 and 188. Basically, the Vikings are moving into the first round again with a second pick here. They're giving about future second a this year, second and a pick swap here. Who do you think this means they're going up and getting a quarterback here? I think that it shows, it shows that the betting odds are moving in that favor. Uh, it's showing that JJ McCarthy more than likely is going at four. Um, there's still a lot of time left until the draft people. Let's keep in mind that. Keep in mind that I'm also hearing that the Patriots and the Vikings potentially have a deal in place. Most people oh. are focus, most people are focusing on the Cardinals and and the Vikings having a deal in place, but the Patriots and the, we could come to a point in this draft where people are really just going to want to go up and get their guys, and four might not be it enough, especially if. Caleb does come to a point where he decides he doesn't want to go to Chicago and they switch because if you're up there at three, let's say hypothetically, the Vikings are up at three, you know, they trade up with the Patriots and Caleb decides I don't want to go to Chicago. He could have his choice to go to have Washington move up and he could do with Cliff Kingsbury or he could force both and have and end up in Minnesota there is a possibility. I'm not saying it's it it could it's gonna happen. There's a small, small, small chance, but you're gonna have to get up there to get your guy 100, yeah. percent and it's gonna take three firsts. Regardless, I think that whatever the the it's definitely probably minus money right now. But if it's close to even money, the the prop for the Vikings to go and draft a quarterback with that first pick. I'd be placing it. Even if it's like right around minus money, it might be real juice now. So if it's super juice, I'm not taking that prop, but um, I, I'm definitely with you. Who I think the T leads, whatever quarterback it is, they are moving up here. Um, I'm Desmond, hearing Drake may. I'm hearing that the Vikings really like Drake may. I'm hearing Everyone that too, but it, it's lying season though. It, we got to keep our head on a swivel boys. Cause you know, that could be agent talk. Just trying to fluff some people up here. Um, Desmond Ritter trade to the Cardinals for Rondale Moore. Steve, uh, another late round shot for you, Rondell Moore, or are you, you good on that? No, I'm in on Rondell Moore on the late round like shot. I, honestly, R- Rondell Moore should be a third down running back. That's what he really should be. He's not a very good route runner, but he's like super fast and good with the ball in his hands. Yeah, and good I don't in space. Know, good in some like, I don't know why on earth he doesn't just transition to that Austin Eckler kind of player. Um, we've seen it work. Uh, I think LaVisca Chenault, Cordero Patterson, like guys like that. Yeah, that when they start playing running back, all of a sudden look pretty good at it. Uh, I think Rondell Moore could be in maybe, that situation. Yeah, maybe he could play that role. We we know they we've they've seen used it Cordell Patterson. In yeah, exactly. Good call out there. Um, Sam Howell, another 2022 rookie traded. They all got traded this weekend. Who Ritter, Howell, Matt Corral is going to be starting in the UFL. So like terrible draft class. Sam Howell uh, traded Seattle though. That's cool. You know, I I, I don't think it's really any significance he's going to be replacing drew Locke as the backup there this showed me more about what washington's doing than like what sam howell's future is like if they were going after drake may and drake may and sam howell, yeah. sam howell are buddies they would have kept yeah. him so yep agree commanders aren't interested in drake may you guys can check all those yep. off your mock drafts that's the truth yeah if Right now, I would be I would be putting money that they're taking Jaden Daniels. I, I think that's where the betting market lies right now as well. If they don't move up. Ty- Tyron Smith to the Jets. Brees Hall to the moon. T- I gotta love this move from the Jets. They're going after it, and they just got another tackle as well 
here, Steve. You got to like this for Brees Hall, who terrible offensive line. He gets Tyron Smith in there. We imagine they still could add a potential another lineman or two in the first two rounds of the draft. So, like, you got to like this for, for Brees Hall, who already is a top six pick on underdog right now. Yeah, I love this for Brees Hall. He's already my dynasty RB1, and he's stayed there since he's coming to the league. Yeah. Um, like, I am a Brees Hall guy. I love him. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is just uh, add more weapons, add more yeah. weapons, add more weapons. Mike Williams uh, at, joins the team as well. We didn't have that noted that came out after we were prepping for the show, but another good blocking wide receiver there. Who, exactly. So, so I, I like that. And uh, another potential uh, got explosive wide receiver for your uh, former man's Aaron Rodgers. Well, teams are just learning that you can't just drop in a, a rookie left tackle anymore. That's just not going to happen. So I'm glad that the Jets went out and got a left tackle and they can still go out and draft a right tackle at 10 this year with like someone like Olu Pashanu or JC Latham. Yeah. So the, the Jets are really saying to Aaron Rodgers, we got you this year. All right, we're gonna go out. We're gonna build you an O line, and we're gonna yeah. get you Mike. We're gonna get you Mike Williams. Yeah. And I think we want to talk about the Frisky Jets just a little bit, just because we're on IBT. Let's do it, okay? With Mike Williams going there, um, that turf is a concern. Let's just make that very clear. That turf is a, is oh, a concern yeah. coming up, oh, yeah. coming off an injury yeah. for Mike Williams. Um, I'm a little weary at price for him, but I think he could definitely eat into Garrett Wilson uh, a ton. Um, oh, but, but I'm not worried about that. I'm not. We've worried never. About that. Garrett Wilson obviously could be like a Devonte Adams to Aaron Rodgers, but he, he we've will. Never, we've never seen someone with Mike Williams' caliber as a a big receiver down the field on the other what side caliber? of someone like Devonte Adams. Mike Williams is good. No, he Mike isn't. Williams is good. No, Mike isn't. Williams is good. There's stuff. My, I put that on my shirt. Mike Williams is good. I don't <laughs> know how many times I have to say that. He's tall. Like. Steelers sign Van Jefferson to a one-year deal. Um, I know it's not important to note, but he is the wide receiver too on the depth chart right now. So like there's a potential Tyler Boyd comes in slots in the wide receiver three, but as of right now, like I I think they will add a couple day two receivers in Pittsburgh. That's what they usually do, but something to keep in mind. And like, if you do need a a, a late round best ball dart throw last round of of the draft, he could be someone or also just someone to consider uh, potentially looking out and making sure he is rostered in your dynasty league. Joe Flacco to the Colts, who if I had someone ignorantly say, I offered a third round pick for Justin Fields in a super flex league. And they said, quote, I wouldn't even trade Joe Flacco to, to you for a third round dynasty rookie pick. How about that one? At this point, you never know with Joe. Like coming off an injury with Anthony Richardson, you never know. Like I don't know what his uh, what his re injury probability percentage is at. Uh, I ha- I could look on Draft Sharks, um, and th- they could tell me. But I don't know what it is. It's good that they have someone, but yeah, I still I still think I would take a third rounder. That's crazy that they. Don't like <laughs> yeah, that. that was ignorant, Steve. That was ignorant. That's insane. That's insane to me. That like you wouldn't trade Joe Flacco to like I give you joe flacco just to get him off my roster i'd, get, I'd, I mean, I'd give you to him for a fourth or fifth round I, I think the empty roster spot is worth getting rid of joe <laughs> flacco for so i Don't mean get me wrong i love i love footsteps and it, it is great like if you do have anthony richardson you should like i, I should think make, joe flacco this year. yeah yeah in, in a dynasty format and, and and i think bottom line the biggest thing about this move guys is it tells me michael Pittman jr to the fucking moon because even if there is something that happens to anthony richardson we know that Joe Flacco feeds his number one. We saw what Amari did down the stretch in Njoku. So this to me makes me very happy. Like I, I am very confident Michael Pittman Jr. is a third round pick this year. I'm usually not in on him at that price, but I think I would go that high now. I cannot wait to see him and Brock Bowers together on the field. That's that's been Hoob's little sneaky link as well. A part of me wants to like really dissect this and think that the fact that they went out and got Joe Flacco uh, tells me a lot on where they think Anthony Richardson is in his like rehab. Uh, because I've heard at least Joe Flacco, there's been a lot of suitors that wanted to bring Joe Flacco in. Like he could return I... the Browns. The OC from the Browns is now with the Patriots. I heard that he could, he could have been in that quarterback room with Jacoby Brissett teaching, uh, teaching a rookie quarterback this Joe year. Flacco doesn't so... want to teach anyone. I, I, y- yes, you are correct on that, Steve. He, he has kind of said that in the past. And, I will say too, uh, who we were kind of hearing some different things, and I think that might have just been his camp kind of dr- trying to drum up stuff because he was on PMS last week, and and he pretty much said like 
I wasn't getting any calls. Like he was surprised that he wasn't getting any calls uh, when he started seeing deals flying left and right. So I, I think that this doesn't worry me about Anthony Richardson at all. I know it might spook you a little bit, but I'm still in on Anthony Richardson. And the good thing is too, even in a redraft format, if you take Richardson and he has to go down, you're going to have to fight for Joe Flacco off waivers, but you can still go get him. And you feel more confident in a Flacco than you did a Minshew riding him last year. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo to the Rams. Don't really have to say anything about it, except the California kid stays in California. And Mike Vrabel joins the Browns as a personnel consultant. This is like an owner trying to do too much. This is Jimmy Haslam. He 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 loves to be down the South. He, his business is from the South. I think he probably ran into Vrabel at like a country club or something down in Tennessee. And like, this is doing too much, Steve. I, I don't like this move because... Kevin Stefanski is a really great coach, and I, I think pretty good with personnel, and it just kind of convolutes things a little bit. But, hey, we we know uh, f- from the Jerry Judy move earlier today, the Browns are just fucking – Jimmy Haslam doesn't give a fuck. The Browns are also a mid-fucking franchise. Like, on top <laughs> of the t- – you know what? This is a match made in fucking heaven because mid joins mid. Like, Mike no, Vrabel can't build a fucking great. team. Mike Vrabel can't build a fucking team. The Browns can't build a team. This is just shit on shit. This is just bad. This is going to be just annoying. And I'm not going to listen to this all friggin' year either about, you know, ooh, is Vrabel coming for Stefanski's job? Kevin Stefanski could coach circles around Mike Vrabel. So, like, let's let's call that what it is. Wow. I don't know about that. I I I think I can call close. a halfback dive 35 times a game. That's not hard. <laughs> That's not difficult. There's nothing good about that. Who have any final thoughts on the Browns here and like Jerry Judy and that whole situation? Because it is wild to see Jerry Judy be getting paid $19 million nowadays. Well, it's crazy that now Deshaun Watson's contract isn't just the worst contract on the Browns. It's also the worst contract, yeah. not the worst contract in the league. So that's they have the two worst contracts crazy. in the league now, I think. I think it's safe to say that. I don't know that's how really you could pay him that. That's that's just not that's. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it, but because they have Mike Rabel, I don't. Yeah, I, I think they had that stirred up beforehand for sure. Well, guys, I appreciate you breaking down the news with me. We're gonna have a little fun here, and we're gonna play a game of Ring of Fire. Uh, we're gonna bring in Kyle Scott to host that here right after the drop. Ladies and gentlemen, we got something real special planned for you tonight. This is The Ring of Fire, featuring our special guest, Kyle Scott. Now y'all, saddle up, strap in. We're going to have a real good time. All right, it's Ring of Fire. It's our drinking game converted into a fantasy football and trivia mini game here on the IBT Media channel. Kyle, good to see you, brother. I feel like I haven't seen your face on camera live in too long. So uh, welcome back. How are we feeling? And can you explain Ring of Fire to those new to uh, to the program? Yeah, it's been a while. It's good to be back as always. Ring of Fire is a very simple drinking game. You pull a card and then generally you drink. Uh, but... The, the basic premise here is each card is going to correlate to a different question, uh, and it's going to be kind of like a prompt. It can be about fantasy football. It can be about movies or culture, TV, what have you. It, there's a lot of possibilities in these cards. So let's see what they have in store. Hoove, did you just switch? Uh, did you just switch hats or have you been wearing that the whole time? I've been wearing it the whole time. Did you just notice? I did. I did just notice it. Makes make, we're getting a little country up here. Uh, Kyle, go ahead, man. What? Uh, let's go ahead and flip this first card, and we'll see what happens here. All right, three is me. Answer a question about yourself. What's a favorite St. Patrick's Day memory of yours? Hoove, what's your favorite St. Patrick's Day memory? Uh, I remember a few buddies of mine. We used to go up to the Wisconsin Dells every St. Patrick's Day weekend, and we would all hang have like a bro weekend, and we'd go up to the Kalahari, and they're like almost every St. Patrick's Day weekend we'd go up there, and that was a good that was a good good one good childhood memory for sure. I'm not a, I wasn't a big drinker, 
like yeah so so going off for saint patrick's day stuff like at the bar has never enticed me so yeah i'd probably say just like good old childhood saint patty's day memories that's it hell yeah hell yeah uh kyle I, i'll throw this one out there that kind of you're involved with a little bit so i think it's maybe 2018 Maybe yeah, they would say 2018 Pat, St. Patrick's Day. Are you Patties as it's known at Indiana University, Pennsylvania? Um, yeah, so it's a good old fashioned, you know, kind of just throw down at the house, uh, see what happens. Maybe go out to the bars later. I don't even know if we were old enough to go to the bars at that point, but you know, see what kind of the night takes us. And uh, had one friend get a little too ignorant, a little too ignorant. He was throwing, he was throwing stuff. He wanted his keys. You know, I remember him just like cutting his hand open and like shit was wild. That's all you need to know. It's so, like. Kyle, myself, a couple other of our friends kind of just like chilled out in my bedroom almost like the whole night, just kind of drinking and like just like chatting. And like I felt like that was a really cool time, Kyle. I don't I don't really remember why, why we did that, why we kind of just hung out in my room uh, for for a long time. But it was it was fun. A lot of good conversation. And um, man, I think we almost stayed up till the sun came up. Yeah, I do remember that night. uh, Kind of. Um, I don't, I think you stayed up. I was in and out of sleep. I think that's why we went to your room. Perhaps. Uh, Cause there were a lot of people in your house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Seth, Seth had the party house, of course. Oh, of course. Ah, you know, it was just... a cool basement mostly. Yeah. Everyone it's... just used them for his basement. There you go. Oh! <laughs> and, the, and the bush light. Steve, what do you have for us? Best, uh, one of your favorite St. Patrick's Day's memories. Ah, man, you know, I've never really been a big celebrator of St. Patrick's Day. So I guess it's probably just like when I was in college down at Florida State, uh, just Irish car car bombs. We were all way too young to be drinking. Like, yeah. it just like got sloppy, got messy. It was fun. We had to like, I, it was just a mess. And Tallahassee, any, t- any reason to party is a good reason to party. And that just was what we did so it was me and my boys we went we had fun i'm not a huge saint patrick's day guy but that was a fun time oh yeah <laughs> we got joey in the chat saying i'd like to hang out in seth's room until the sun comes up i appreciate that joey that's quite the uh that's quite the compliment there. that's quite the compliment uh kyle what do, what do we have here and uh yeah wow oh uh, now he's blushing all right. I, mean, I did stay the night until the sun came up. But we don't have to delve too deep into it. We got number five here. Well, what do we got for five? All right. So five is top five. Five guys. Okay. It's five guys is what it's actually called. So you're going to pick the correct answer out of five. It's a multiple choice question. Okay. Uh, so... Out of these, uh, which of the which of these twenty twenty four rookie running backs had the most scrimmage touchdowns this year? Last year, excuse me. Blake Corum, Ray Davis, Audric Esteem, uh, Dylan Johnson, Rasheen Ali, Kimani Vidal, or Trey Benson. God, I love fucking Ray Davis. I hope it's Ray Davis. That's all I gotta say. What do you think, Hoove? I think it's Blake Corum. Steve? I think it was I think it was Blake Corum, but I wouldn't be shocked if it was Trey Benson. That that's that's a good answer. I was literally thinking I'm like Trey Benson could be up there too. Like I really want to throw that name out there, but Blake Corum is my I don't want to seem like too much of a homer. Well, I have bad news for you. Trey Benson, out of those, had uh, was tied for the fewest with wow. 15. Uh, Ray Davis with a respectable 21. Ray and Blake Corum. Let's go, baby. 28 had the most. Ray All right, Davis. so it was Corum. I thought so. All right. All right. Let's flip another card here. See what we're working with. Um, all right. Number seven. Seven. Uh-oh. Seven minutes in heaven with Seth in the closet. Uh, seven is heaven. React to the the fantasy ceiling prompt boys more fantasy football upside who's got more upside gentlemen guess gus edwards or devin singletary a couple old heads devin singletary just like seth seth who do you think uh 
I love Gus Edwards to the Chargers. I think Greg Roman re- reuniting with that system. We know what Greg Roman wants to do. Let's be honest, boys. These moves from the Chargers, they signal to me, yeah, maybe they bring in a Brock Bowers. Maybe they bring in a Rome, a Dunze. Maybe they bring in a, a young rookie that, that could be promising here as a pass catcher. But they're going to win by running the ball. They're going to open it up somehow w- w- with Joshua Palmer. They're going to open it up somehow here, uh, potentially with Quentin Johnson or whoever else can, they can add. But like they're going to need to rely on Gus Edwards. And despite like the threat of someone like Blake Corum, or a Trey Benson or someone like that joining this backfield, I think there's still a very good chance that Gus Edwards finishes with double digit touchdowns once again here. Um, yeah. G- give me, give me Gus Edwards. I like Devin Singletary. I think Devin Singletary is going to be the more consistent producer, um, but I don't think he has quite the ceiling that our guy Gus has. So um, yeah, Singletary safer, but I think Gus has the boom in him. So give me the boom, the wheels on the bus go round and round. Hoove yourself. Um, I think that I want to, I wish I could answer this after the draft because it, it seems inevitable that the Chargers are going to bring someone in. I've been pushing because the Titans brought in, uh, Tony Pollard, that Hassan Haskins is a cut candidate. And with the Michigan connection that the Chargers could be a, a, a place that he winds up. Hassan Haskins ain't moving the needle. It's Gus bus, bro. Sorry, I had to burp, so I had to like I had to mute it for a second there. I didn't want that on camera, but yeah. um, so with like Hassan Haskins like going there potentially, I could see him eating up that role because like with Gus Edwards being there, like I don't see them bringing in a Blake Corum. That's that's pretty similar in my opinion. Like you're gonna get the same out of both guys and um, Blake Corum at ADP for draft in the in the second third round. Like I don't know if the Chargers are gonna spend that with all the holes that they have. So. <laughs> I could see them going after someone later or hoping that they can bring someone in, maybe like a Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I could see them bringing in a Clyde Edwards Hilaire to compete with Gus Edwards. And then I'd have to go with Devin Singletary as my answer. So I I, I don't know if Eric Gray is going to chip away as much as. So Devin Singletary is your answer. Long story short. Correct. Yeah. Go fuck yourself, Steve. It's Devin Singletary. I don't even have to think about it. I don't need to rationalize it. One's better than the other. That's, that's why like, Gus Edwards, is, Gus Edwards is not as good as Devin Singletary. Taking the talent card. Yeah, I, I agree with you on talent. I like the situation, though, better for Gus Edwards. 10, Kyle. All right. 10 is categories. That's the same as it is in the original game. So you just name categories until he can't know more. Uh, Steve, would you like to choose the first one and start us off? Sure. Um. All right, movies. Sing. Oh, we can't do movies. That's too general. Pick a genre of movies at least. Horror Ooh. movies. Scream. Kyle. Oh, uh, Evil Dead. Going up the ladder, hoof. What? What's the? I'm sorry. What, I, horror I'm horror nervous. movies. Yep, horror movies. This is the category. You just got to name a horror movie. No one mentioned. Silence of the Lambs. Insidious. Nightmare on Elm Street. Halloween. Uh, Who the loses? Nurse. The Nurse. The Nurse. <laughs> That's not a horror movie. And it took too long. <laughs> yeah, you're out, Hoove. Drink, buddy. Uh, we'll flip another one, Hoove. Damn. Yeah, not, not the cleanest there, Jim. Not the cleanest there. We were rolling there for a second. I thought that was a good, a good category. Steve, Jack, Kyle. Jack is the same as the regular game. It is never have I ever. What are we doing? Five, three, two, one. Uh, we'll do two. We'll do two. Two. Yeah. Hey, never have I ever. I got this. Who go first, Brand? Uh, never have I ever. Dude, I'm so bad at this. Uh, never have I ever slept on a roof. But you have done that. I thought it's something that you haven't done. Like, has but anyone have, else done? No, it's something you haven't done that also other people have done. I'm really bad at this, honestly. Yeah, you're, you're really bad at never, this. Never have I ever... <laughs> yes, I have. Never have I ever... I wasn't invited to parties as a kid, Kyle. I don't know these games, okay? Never have um, I ever rostered Traylon Burks in, in any type of league. 
or dynasty league. Let me be more specific. In a dynasty league, never rostered Traylon Burks. I don't think I've rostered Traylon Burks. Okay, Steve, what do you got? Uh never have I ever come in last in my fantasy league. Any fantasy league? Any. Damn, you got me. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've definitely at some point I would say taken last in a league. I so, have. yeah. Okay, we Kyle, what do you got? Um, we'll do a throwback. Never have I ever drafted Tom Brady in a fantasy league. Uh, I don't, don't want to. Oh, yeah, him. yeah. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I, I Scott Fishbowl 2020. Dude was a stud for me. Loved him. Appreciated him. Uh, I we'll, do, I did. we'll do one more card here, and then we'll, we'll get from the forum. Eight, Kyle. Eight is mate. Who is the better handcuff? Joe Flacco or Jameis Winston? A little football, a little QB talk. Uh, I, I would say. Oh, go ahead. Oh. Uh, I'll take Jameis. I'll take Jameis this year just because the uncertainty of Watson, like we don't know if he's going to – like we just saw Russell Wilson like get cut from Denver and them take that pay cut. Like I don't know if it's necessarily going to be next year with Watson that if he doesn't show up that he could get cut. But if Watson doesn't show up, they could they could see what they have in Winston or he obviously injury always could happen. But – if there's a reason why he's being called up there, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see it through. So I'll take a stab on Jameis Winston. Steve, I'm going Jameis as well. You know what you're going to get in Joe Flacco, pretty much at this point in his career. It's fine. It's whatever. It's not terribly sexy, but Jameis, that make it go for 505 at any given time, and he is way more fun to watch. So. I can't. I mean, guys, we just saw Joe Flacco over, average over like twenty-two fantasy points a game, and he's playing for in, in a for a, a system, a great Shane Steichen system. Has a number one weapon there, great running back, can get some stuff off the bootleg there. I, I, I don't know, a lot like the Brown situation, doesn't it? One yeah, thing there's, that also, been... there's also Snoop Huntley in Cleveland now as well. I uh, wow, I, I I cannot disagree more. It's Joe Flacco to the like to the moon here and I, actually I, compared to Jameis, I, like, I don't even know if Jameis, I, I mean, Jameis is preaching on the weekends guys. How much, how much, how much head in the game does James have right now? Like, come on. He's preaching. Deshaun on the Watson. Week- Deshaun Watson is one massage parlor away from never playing football again. Jameis Winston is a far better cuff. There's one thing that I want to add, add to this is uh, there's one thing that he could be saying, like when he goes to Cleveland, is like leaving New Orleans, like there were so many opportunities that he should have been traded for an opportunity to start somewhere else with all these quarterbacks going down. And they were they were hesitant or they were so committed on keeping him that Cleveland has shown with Josh Dobbs and all these backup quarterbacks that they're willing to trade these backup quarterbacks and bring in a Joe Flacco off the streets. So maybe that's why he's going to the Browns. Is like, all right, I got a job. I got job security. And the Browns have organization has shown that they'll, they're willing to trade someone to give them an opportunity. So maybe that's why he's heading to Cleveland. Jameis starting for Cleveland is the happy ending we all deserve. We're, that's not a headline. That's that's a terrible headline. I won't argue with you about that. Um, Kyle, thank you for uh, being here for Ring of Fire, my friend. Um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to round out the program, taking some of your guys' question here, questions here from, from the forum. If you're up, stuck, think about what to do here in between. We got advice for you. Back and forth all day, trying to pick the play. Let's hear what the boys here had to say. Presented by the Fantasy Football Advice Network. All right, from the forum, our friends at Fantasy Football Advice Network greatly appreciate them yes. continuing to power this segment over here, our mailbag, where we can take a bunch of different questions from you guys here, both on the forum and also uh, here in the chat. So um, if you guys are new to, to the Fantasy Football Advice Network, this is a platform that combines different apps like Patreon, Patreon Instagram, Facebook, all into one platform for fantasy football consumers and content creators. Hoob, I know you've been dropping content over there. You've been engaging with the platform. What more can you tell us about it? They got league classifieds if you're trying to find some new leagues. They have chat groups. They, we're going to be starting our fantasy football community over there soon as well. So, so much stuff happening. What more can you tell us about it? We just have like so many cool people that are just like starting to get involved like with it. 
like there's people that I didn't even know on Twitter that I'm just popping over to the vice forum and, and I'm meeting. So it's kind of nice to just like meet new people and get like with Twitter, you can kind of get involved with the same people over and over again. Yeah, the yeah. Same algorithm algorithm, the same, the algorithm just picks yeah. up the same people. And so it's just nice to talk to some fresh faces, you know, and head over there to the, the forum and get some new perspectives. And, and I just dropped my mock draft before I dropped it over on Twitter over yeah. there and created some buzz. So people are watching, people are liking it. People are over there. So make sure you sign up and get your, you get your accounts active. Yeah, it's free to join, guys, and then you can also upgrade your account if you'd like using the promo code IBT for 25% off. Um, but highly recommend if you guys are a creator looking for somewhere just to post some content, it's a great place for that as well. And um, really, like for me, like I'm into a bunch of different sports. You know, I like NASCAR, I like PGA, and I also like NFL. So like if I just want some fancy football content or to help other people get advice, I go over there to the Fancy Football Advice Network at FancyFootballAdvice.com. I recommend you do the same. First question here from our guy, Tyler Bradley. Uh, what is your favorite free agency move for fantasy football so far? Um, how are you feeling, Steve? Who's your? Uh, what's your favorite move or your favorite player that was impacted by a move potentially? Uh, I like Joe Mixon going to Houston. Um, I think that offensive line is strong. I think with C.J. Stroud under center, I think he's much more apt to dump the ball off to running backs. So I'd have Singletary get a lot more catches than Joe. You know, I don't think Joe Mixon was ever used in the role he should have been. I love him going to, I love him going to Houston for this. He stays in a bell cow role. I think that's really strong. Damian Pierce obviously is not the guy that we all thought he could be. Yeah. So I'm, I'm huge on Joe Mixon going to Houston. Joe Mixon to Houston. I like that call a lot. He gets a, a, a fresh three-year deal, I believe, if I'm correct on that as well. So, um, you know, they're investing him. They like him. Uh, we thought maybe it could be Aaron Jones or Saquon there. It is Joe Mixon. Who? What's your favorite free agency move for fantasy football? Uh, the Joe Mixon one was really good. Honestly, that that's probably my favorite one. Okay. But if we're going to be original, we take it away from Steve. Uh, there's two that are really coming to mind. I got the entire off season that we've seen from the Titans. I know we just talked about it earlier. Steve's not a fan, yeah, yeah. but like just for Will Levis alone, like what he could, what he could be if he does produce this year could be a top 12 quarterback with all those weapons. If they all produce and everything meshes really well with Brian Callahan, like we could be looking at a franchise weapon. Like they obviously got rid of Mike Frabel, who in my opinion is a good court is a good coach. And the NFL is just moving on to a different style. And that's why they're bringing Brian Callahan, who's more offensive court, offensive minded to be with Will sure. Levis. So if, if Will Levis is what they, what the Titans organization believes that he can be, the sky's the limit. So I really like that one. And I really like Alexander Madison for Zamir white, because boom, there's no way that Alexander Madison is going to be taking away anything from Zamir white, Zamir yeah. white, like just getting jacked up. And we don't really know who the quarterback is, but we saw what Gardner Minshew can do. And we know that Gardner Minshew can produce some awesome fantasy running backs this year with uh, Jonathan Taylor and Zach Moss. So I'm all about it. If Gardner Minshew starts, if Aiden O'Connell starts, we've seen it with Josh Jacobs and Aiden O'Connell. Mm -hmm. I'm here for it. So it's Mira White to the yeah. moon because of Aiden Alexander Madison. I touched on Gus Edwards earlier. I like Gus Edwards quite a bit um, out there in Los Angeles. Also, I think a sneaky winner is George Pickens. Not only does he get an upgrade at quarterback from Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph, and Mitch Trubisky to bottom line, I don't think Russ is any good either. I, but bottom line, I think he's better than than what, what he had before. And also, if Justin Fields comes in, Justin Fields can, can make him at least better than he was. And losing Deontay Johnson solidifies George Pickens will be the number one option here, despite by Arthur Smith, you know, doing some crazy shit with Drake London. I think he realizes, look, George Pickens is the only guy on this team. The, the wide receiver, too, is Van Jefferson. Behind him, it's Calvin Austin the third and Miles Boykin. Like, that's where we are right now in Pittsburgh. George Pickens, to me, will be a, uh, a very safe fifth or sixth round pick, and I'm willing to pay that price for him now while I wasn't beforehand. So I like George Pickens. He's one of my uh, sneaky fantasy football winners. Let's get to another question here. From uh, Texas Trojan, great this trade, Curtis Samuel for Joshua Palmer. Steve, I know you're not the, the biggest Curtis Samuel fan, as alluded to. Uh, would you be trading him for Joshua Palmer, and what do you grade that trade? Uh, if you're getting Joshua Palmer, you get an A+. That's a fantastic trade. I'm 1,000% trading Curtis Samuel for Joshua Palmer right now. 
who else are you trying to target out in LA? Who's going to catch the ball? Eckler's not there. Williams isn't there. Allen's not there. Everett's yeah. not there. I mean, Justin Herbert better learn how to catch his own passes really soon. <laughs> Because Josh Palmer and him are the only two things they got. They yeah. will be drafting a wide receiver at some point, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. But Joshua Palmer for Curtis Samuel, if you got Palmer, A+. plus. Hoove, how do you feel about this one? I think I would, I would want Joshua Palmer. It's tough because I'm a little bit – I'm not going to go all in on Quentin Johnston this year, but we can't really – doubt that Jim Harbaugh could be a guy that could get the most out of Quentin Johnston. If anyone's going to do it, it could be a great coach like Jim Harbaugh. So I don't, if, if Johnston doesn't pay out, Palmer's obviously going to be the wide receiver one in that offense, or at least the most productive, but you know what you're going to get with Curtis Samuel. And that's with Josh Allen and Josh Allen's obviously one of the best fantasy quarterbacks. We don't know how good Justin Herbert's going to be fantasy wise like this year so i think i'll take J- curtis samuel actually okay i thought coming into this question i would take josh palmer but or uh curtis samuel i think i'm going josh palmer though here actually for a guy texas trojan like i i i think i would give it like a you know like a b minus like a c like i don't think you're moving uh up a ton but i think there is a little bit more upside with palmer like let's not forget guys joshua palmer is a guy who while he does have some injury concerns, hasn't played a ton of games the last couple of seasons, still someone who's put up nearly 800 yards in, you know, 11, 12 games started in the past as well. And um, we know what this guy can do, like also kind of a touchdown threat, deep threat. Um, So yeah, I like Joshua Palmer a little bit more, I think, I think specifically, but I don't know. It's close. It's close. I think Steve, I think with Justin Herbert, especially, he can target like he locks in on guys. Quentin Johnson, yeah, um, like get rid of him. But I think I think honestly, um, Joshua Palmer could really play. Like he could he could easily see eleven targets a game. Oh, I don't know. No, that's too high of a number. They're not I think, gonna pass that. Much. I think that yeah. I think six or seven. I think they will bring in potentially some day two wide receivers as well. If if not a wide wide receiver, maybe one. I, maybe. I think, Someone Uh, has to catch the ball. Someone has to catch the ball, and there's no one else there. Here's one from Fat Squirrel around us out. 12-team PPR, one quarterback, 0.5 tight end premium, Tank Dell, or the 111. How do you feel about this one, Who Are you taking the the sure thing in Tank Dell, or do you like the 111? I really like the 111 this year just because it's this draft class. This draft class is just going to be way too good. Uh, I I can't pass that up. So I have to go with it. I wow. have to go with the 111. Just because Tank Dell, like Nico Collins and Tank Dell are interchangeable and they both can be productive, but we don't know. Like, has Nico Collins resigned with the, at all? You're high. You're high. Has you know, he? He's still on his rookie deal. He's still on the rookie deal. So, no, he has not resigned. He will get a bag, though, when he does. I don't know. I think I'm still going to go 111 just because we could be getting a down a Mitchell around that price. And I, I would rather have tank Dell hundred like Steve talk me out of getting tank Dell because in my opinion, like we have, ta- not only do we have tank Dell who we know is a sure thing, like a good wide receiver in this league, potentially an elite wide receiver. And he's tied to a great rook, a young quarterback. So we know they're going to be together for, at least the next four years so how, how do you like i'd rather have that than like who i think like uh, mitchell is actually who i was thinking him or troy franklin kind of in that 111 range but steve like i want the sure thing i know i i know what we're getting with tank i know we're not getting the next next quentin johnston well and i'm not going to talk you out of tank Dell. and the thing is we actually don't know what we're getting in tank Dell because we only saw him as rookie year for a limited amount of time we don't know what that ceiling is but we know it's high and we know that floor is awfully high I am not taking the 111 over Tank Dell. I'm barely taking the 105 over Tank Dell at this point in a league like this. Yeah. Tank Dell Tank Dell is on the trajectory. Like we pray, you pray the 111 turns into Tank Dell last year. You pray for it. You pray the 101 turns into Tank Dell last year. That stretch he had, like 
this this dude is built different and cj stroud is built different yeah houston is building something really good and i don't give a shit if nico collins is there or not those guys can <laughs> both exist and exist well and they did that team likes to throw and that's something that i think we're all surprised a little surprised at with Demeco ryan's is that he was pretty pass happy and there's he also to throw it there's also one thing you have to factor in too with like the fact that this draft class is so stacked offensively, like and not in a like the one eleven, the one eleven could be a starting Michael Penix to a team. You know, like if Michael Penix goes to the right situation where he falls to like Denver. It's a one QB league. I would trade Michael Penix every okay. day of the week. Any day that ends in Y. Uh, to I'm be taking, fair, we get a lot of super Michael flex. Penix. We get a lot of super flex questions. So that is fair. I would still yeah. not take Penix at the 111, but I wouldn't take Michael Penix flex. anyway. Super flex for Tank Dell. No way. Uh, who I think you're uh, this I, year? This year or is this ever? I don't know. We have to also factor in sophomore slump with CJ no, Stroud, no, Dell. no, sophomore slump isn't real. That's not a real thing. Don't get, don't get lost in the sauce. That's fake. Well, regardless, fat, fat Squirtle, we are, we are indecisive here. No, we're Ho- not. Hoove is on the wrong. size of the one eleven. <laughs> Steve and I are with Tank Dell, our Lord and Savior. We appreciate you. Um, also appreciate the IBT family hanging out with us tonight. Thank you guys so much. It's been a great episode. Really enjoy every time we can chat it up with y'all. Um, thank you for all the support. Steve, thank you for being here, man. Uh, tell us how we can best support you and everything you have going on, both here at IBT and your other ventures out in the world. Uh, yeah, if you want to support me, then like honestly, uh, my big thing is support my IBT family and honestly if you want to be supportive to me in any sort of way it's be kind to one another be good be good to each other treat one another with love like remember love is love and everyone deserves to be on this planet and everyone is necessary so please be kind to one another thank you man thank you very very strong words um who what do you got for the people man i like turtles (laughs) so much deeper so deep so deep we appreciate that we appreciate that thought we got rachel in the chat as we close out the podcast what's up rachel Rachel? thanks so much for checking in with us um yeah guys i want to echo that i want to echo that and um who i've started to think about something we should do on the pod is like i want to start leaving people with like a little bit of like challenges almost for the week so i kind of want to take what steve said and like go like be like, go be intentionally nice to someone. Maybe you haven't talked to in a little bit or like, just maybe be intentionally nice to someone in your life that you're like, Hey, like this person's a really great person and they help lift me up. Go be intentionally nice to them. Like, I think niceness sometimes can come off fake and like, but like being nice feels nice too. You know what I mean? So Steve, I I love that thought, man. And like, whether it's someone online or whether it's someone in, in your in person life, like go be nice to someone this week. That's my challenge for you guys this week. Go be nice. And, uh, We'll see you guys back here next week. Let me know who, who you were nice to and uh, what conversations that may be brought for you. Um, until next time, thank you guys for all the support, and we'll see y'all uh, keep it in between.